In today's video, we are talking about my experience with intermittent fasting and three tips on how to make your intermittent fasting easier and more effective. In this video, we are only gonna be discussing three different kinds of intermittent fasting, all of which are very similar. The three that we're going to discuss are 16-8, 18-6, and 24. All right, so tip number one is to support detoxification, and we do that by using activated charcoal. Now, if you've listened to and or read Dave Asprey's book, I highly recommend it. Bulletproof Diet is amazing. He also has a few others that I really like, Game Changers, Headstrong. I'll put links in the description below. I always listen to my book, so those are audible links, but, but they do also go to the physical copy of the book if you're interested in that as well. The reason activated charcoal is my number one tip for intermittent fasting is because during fasting, your body is doing a couple of things. The first is you're burning through either, you know, the stores of glycogen, which are in your muscles, but after that, it moves to fat. And fat is a storage site for toxins. Basically what happens is your body needs to put toxins in a certain place and if they can't get it out of the body, it needs to be protected from poisoning you know, the other tissues around so it'll kind of you know, surround it in fat as a way to protect your own body. And so some of your fat, likely all of your fat, has some level of toxins in it. And so as you burn fat, you're actually removing toxins from their storage. And when that happens, they need to be taken out of the body and activated charcoal is incredibly good at that. What happens is the activated charcoal does something called adsorption, kind of just attaches to it. So you have this, let's like, say, sharp toxin. And for just this example, it's kind of scraping tissues as it goes by and cutting things open. So what activated charcoal will do is just kind of latch onto that and you can no longer scrape as it's coming out. That's not exactly what's happening. I just wanted to give you an example to understand that this is something that is going to help get toxins out of your body. Intermittent fasting is something that I've done for years. When I was a late teenager, I did get some exposure to heavy metals and heavy metals are really hard on your body to get out. And so, you know, activated charcoal is actually very good at grabbing onto some of those and pulling them out. And I've noticed that anymore when I fast, I, I fasted for a while, I lost some weight and then it stopped. And no matter what I did, it didn't keep going and I, I just, pretty much gave up because anytime I would try to fast or you know reduce calories or anything like that, I would just get incredibly cranky and mean to those around me. And that's just not something that I wanted. I did notice that you know I was just eating my normal diet and I gained 10 pounds in two weeks for no apparent reason. And I haven't been able to get down below about 245 for the past several years, even with you know a very restrictive diet. So I've had some weird things that I'm not sure why they happened. I've been fasting recently because again, you know, trying to remove some of this winter weight. And the thing that helped the most, I did try our number two tip, which is coming up, and that did help. But the thing that really helped me be able to get through the morning and even the first day that I did it, I went all the way from dinner to dinner. I did a 24 hour fast just because I wasn't hungry, was I added activated charcoal. So how I recommend taking this, you do wanna be careful because activated charcoal can adsorb to many other chemicals, specifically prescription meds. So if you're taking any kind of medicine, really if you're gonna eat or take anything at all in the morning, I would suggest drinking this at least an hour before, up to two hours before. So in the morning, I grab a scoop of this. This, I'll put a link in the description below. This is NutriCost. This is the most cost effective for the amount that I could find. And with how we're using this, you're going to want a larger amount. So, so this is a full pound of activated charcoal and each day you're going to take a one and a half gram scoop. I just mix it into any flavored drink mix. It's delicious. It does kind of change the flavor, but it's tasteless. It's not really, it does, it does change things. But that said, it doesn't taste bad. It's not going to be weird. It can stain clothes and or the grout on your countertop, so be careful. But this is my absolute number one tip when it comes to making your fasting easier and really much more effective because you're going to be pulling all of those toxins out of your body. All right, so my number two tip on making your fasting easier and more effective is to add caprylic acid. Now this is brain octane oil. This is from Bulletproof, which is you know Dave Asprey's company. I absolutely love listening to his stuff because you know early on in his life he was diagnosed with Asperger's, which you know there are some things that I can relate to there, and that's a topic for a different video. So if you want to hear you know struggles with Asperger's. Happy to do a video on that. Just not quite sure if you guys are interested in that. So back to the caprylic acid. Caprylic acid is an MCT, which is a medium chain triglyceride. And basically it's extracted from coconut oil. It's a shorter chain 
of MCT and basically the benefit of that is you'll have less GI distress. Oftentimes if you were to say mix like a tablespoon of coconut, well you probably need more than a tablespoon, a few tablespoons of coconut oil in coffee or you just ate it, something like that, you would get some stomach upset. There's a term called disaster pants and basically that happens when you eat way too much coconut oil. So, so this helps mitigate that, but why would you want this? So the reason why you would want this is one, this will increase ketone production even if you're not in ketosis. I know many of you have looked at the ketogenic diet and it's not for you, trust me, it's not for me either. But the thing that it does have going for it is ketone production for your brain is actually very good and this will keep you satiated and full for a long time as long as you've added the activated charcoal like we talked about in tip one. Because I did try this first. Um, this was the thing that is supposed to make you feel full all day and it worked for a day or two and then I kind of had the same issues that I had before. Since I've added activated charcoal and this, I haven't had an issue. I can. I can go all the way till dinner without eating if I want to. And part of that is the amount of fat that I have to lose. I do have you know, a good amount of calories I can pull out each day, so that's helpful. But also feeling full and being able to detoxify has helped immensely. So how do we use this? I basically just put a tablespoon of this in my morning drink. So my routine goes like this. I wake up and first thing in the morning, I make my activated charcoal drink because I wanna drink that quickly enough that I can take you know, pre-workout and things that I need uh, for later in the day. So my second drink of the day, if I'm working out, is my pre-workout. If it's not, it's a drink with the caprylic acid. I put one tablespoon into a metal shaker cup. You do want to get a metal one. Blender bottle has some good ones. Uh, caprylic acid can mess with some plastics. I just haven't even tested it. I don't want it to ruin or you know leach out anything from my plastic blender bottles. So I've just gone with the aluminum one and I'm sticking with that. You do wanna put one of the blender bottle mixtures in with it and I'll tell you why here in a second. But then it's just some sort of drink um, I have experimented with putting carbonated drinks, you know, like an energy drink type in with it, and that seems to work well, but you're going to be shaking this every time you drink it. Basically, you want to emulsify the oil into the water before you drink it. Otherwise, you have a bunch of oil sitting on top, and that is not very pleasant. So um, actually, I have drank it without shaking it. It's not bad, it's just you would prefer to shake it. Caprylic acid doesn't have really a strong flavor, um, but it does have a little bit of a flavor. The other benefit to caprylic acid, it is very antifungal and antimicrobial. And so again, it helps with the detoxification process. Activated charcoal is not as good at, you know, like attaching to fungi and things like that. I'm sure that it can because it absorbs to almost everything, uh, but killing those microbes and, and really helping your body have a good balance of bacteria, this is going to be what I would recommend for that. So caprylic acid helps with detoxification, helps you feel full, and it helps with ketone production, which some studies actually indicate that you'll get about the amount of ketones you would get if you were eating a ketogenic diet for four days if you take this during fasting. So it's cheap enough that I have just thrown it in there. I feel full, I feel great. I'm not eating breakfast. Sometimes I'm not eating lunch. And so this is totally worth it for me. There are some cheaper ones. I'll put this linked in the description below as well as some alternatives that I haven't tried, but I have heard are also great. Our third and final tip is to find the intermittent fasting window that works for you and fast that way the appropriate amount of days each week. So what I mean by that is we talked about the three different styles of fasting at the beginning. We have 16-8, you have 18-6, and you have 24. And those are very different, even though they sound very similar. Fasting for 16 hours every day is different, very much so, than fasting 20 hours a day. So you need to find the one that fits best. And I'm gonna give you some information here. Hopefully this will help you decide. Um, but again, you're gonna have to test these out and try for yourself. So who is 16-8 for? In my opinion, 16-8 is for those of you out there who are already fairly lean, I would say under 15% body fat for men. And for women, it's gonna be a little different. I would say under between 20 and 22% body fat for women. For those women who are watching, I have had some comments and I just wanna make sure I am covering them as well. There you go, ladies. And the reasoning for fasting for 16 hours if you're leaner is there's a calculation that you can make on how many calories 
per day you can pull from fat. And I believe, I'm gonna flash this on the screen here, but I believe it's 30 calories per pound of fat per day. And so if you have a ton of weight to lose, you can fast for longer because you have more energy to meet your needs. If you're leaner, you have less, and there is a cap on how much energy you can pull from fat. And after that, you're going to have to pull from muscle or other tissues, which is not something you want to do. So for those of you who are leaner, 16-8, don't worry about trying to fast too much longer than that. You can go to the second one that I recommend, which is 18-6. This is for those of you who have a little bit more weight to lose, or you are putting the longevity effects of intermittent fasting over the performance effects. So if you're wanting to get as strong as possible, you want to build muscle, you want to be you know, in very athletic, very strong shape, and you're favoring that over longevity, you want 16-8. If you want a little bit of both, you're gonna wanna go 18-6 and that's going to help with more weight loss, more detoxification, more autophagy, and it's just better overall. This is the one that Dave Asprey recommends. This is what you know I try to do each day as an 18-6. You can also go to a 20 and four, which is more like the warrior diet. This I only recommend if you have a lot of body fat to lose, and you know fasting is your main way of reducing your calories throughout your day. I honestly, 20 and four is very hard to stick to. I've tried it several times and it always ends up burning me out before you know I can get it established. But that does come to my final tip on this is that you need to only fast five to six days per week. I recommend five, I don't recommend six. Um, if you are very well adapted to fasting, and you just feel great, adding that six day is great, but you need at least one to two rest days from intermittent fasting each week. So what that means for me is, you know, doing an 18-6, I'll pick typically, you know, Sunday, maybe Saturday and Sunday, or Sunday and Wednesday, some days when I just am really not feeling it, and I'll say, okay, today, it doesn't matter. If I get a 12 hour fast, that's great. If I get a 15 hour fast, that's great. I'm not counting, I'm waiting till I'm hungry, and then I'm eating. I do still do my morning routine of the activated charcoal drink as well as the brain octane oil drink, but what I do is I just wait until I'm hungry. Typically if it hits lunchtime and I'm not hungry, I'll just eat and that's a way of making sure that my body gets the nutrients. If I'm not hungry by lunchtime, likely I've chosen the wrong day to try you know, doing this. I'll call it a refeed or a break day. Whether it's planned or it's intuitive, you just wanna make sure that the days that you are taking these breaks, you are extra hungry and fasting just doesn't sound good to you. So maybe go three to four days straight and have a break and make sure that you know, you're know you only going a maximum of four days in a row. Preferably more like two to three, which is typically what I do. You could also do a non-weekly rotating, so three days fasting, one day off, three days fasting, one day off. That would work as well. Honestly, I'm not tracking this too carefully. I just know that intermittent fasting makes me feel better, I have more energy, and I need less sleep, which is another surprising benefit of intermittent fasting is that when I'm fasting more, so the 18-6, I can actually get six or so hours of sleep and that said, I highly recommend you put intermittent fasting into your routine, whether that's for longevity or athletic performance or just fat loss. Really the only downside to intermittent fasting is that you're likely not going to be at 100% peak physical and athletic performance if that's your goal. If that's your goal, stick with 18.6, maybe even less. You might need less because you're gonna be leaner, you're gonna be stronger, and you're really dedicating you know, 10 plus hours to training each week. So for those of you that are in that group, this is probably not for you. For the rest of you out there who want health benefits, who want to look good, and who want to maybe shed a little bit of fat, the 18.6 fasting is what I recommend. Remember, take your activated charcoal, take you know caprylic acid, it's C8 MCT oil or brain octane oil. Again, both of these are linked down in the description below. 